like on on point just in general mm. North Alberta kid, uh, merci beaucoup for the uh, Canadian hundred, which is like what ten dollars American, I think. Thank you, uh, Captain. Awesome, thank you. Just like the car, or just like the car too. Most women believe that they hold the same value as a woman, with actual. What is that? Chastity, Chastity and fair. What is that? Virtue. <laughs> Virtuous car one. Why would a man? Uh, did not read that fast enough. I'm sorry. Would I'll want a car two over one. I'll pull it back up. Just like car two, most women believe that they could hold the same value as a woman with the actual chastity and virtuous car one. Who, why would a man want car two over car one? Okay, so I actually would like to answer that um, just because there are some cars, you know, like especially oh the more vintage cars, for example, they've been, you know, around like for a while and they would sit in the garage um, for, you know, a few years, but it's like um, they have not put the test of, of actually like that that they're reliable, that they wouldn't break. And there are a few cars, like for example, there's a Jaguars, you mm -hmm. know, like a few Jaguars, like where they're just not made to begin with reliable. So you would want a car with a few more miles on it, um, you know, just to make sure that it wouldn't just break apart, you know, like 100, 200 miles in. However, which is why it's completely weird to compare cars to women because cars are made by you know all these different people all these different components that are playing part to it and women you know they're human beings hmm. he's clearly talking about women well yes i know Very that clearly. i, I yeah. know that he's clearly talking about women which is why like i don't think that that's a a that's good a analogy. Yeah, you don't think all. that's a good analogy. Like in 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 any way, just because again, cars are you know they're machines and they're made. You know, there's it's it, they're very technical, and women again, there's it's a whole different aspect. Like you can't compare like an in, inanimate made object with you know a human being. I think that's it's an interesting saying. comparison. I'm not gonna say that I like it, but I think it's very interesting because. When it comes to relationships, like as a woman or a man, I think I think that as a woman going into a relationship, knowing who you are and who you are as a romantic partner, whether that be sexually, your communication styles, I think knowing those things are so important when, when, when seeing how compatible you can be with someone. But what does that have to do with a car? It doesn't have anything to do with a car, but we know the con we know the comparison that the person in the chat is making. Yeah, obvious, but it's like so. Like again, I think like, that in a way, that's like that, that I think has, that's why because a car would, doesn't know itself. I think that's why someone would pick car two. What with, mileage? Or, or car, the what's the more the car with the more car. mileage yeah. is? Yeah. They know a bit about more themselves, mm. and then when and you go like into a relationship, reliable. it's kind of hard, in my opinion, when it's someone's first relationship I agree. they they lack that experience mm -hmm. of communication being with someone mm -hmm. intellectually sometimes physically yeah. they don't know what they're doing everything's new and so i feel like relationships in a way are trial and error because it's very seldom that someone two people get together and it's their first relationship ever and they're together forever when it does work like that when there's high school sweethearts that's fabulous i'm so happy for them but it's very rare but yeah, yeah but it's like, very rare alex, yeah I, I completely agree I with think, you um, i think alex that you're looking at this in the wrong kind of the wrong way right the wrong dynamic you're kind of taking it and viewing it through a feminine perspective kind of over and over again right oh you can't compare women to cars you can't okay so take yourself out of that for a second and put yourself in the male's perspective so from the male perspective, shit works or it don't work. That's how we think of everything, right? Does this shit work? Yep, it works, great, right? That's <laughs> how we think of everything. So yeah. how we think of step two is, when is this thing that works not going to work, right? So that this would go into the car analogy, right? So if it's got 200,000 miles, we know it's not going to work at you know 400,000 miles, right? But, then but we're taking the same mechanical brain and we're applying it to women and we're like, okay, does this woman work if she has a lot more dick? Or does she work if she has a lot less dick? Does, does it work for us or does it not work for us? Very simple, right? It, it actually is a fine comparison because the idea is just, does it work, does it not work? Is this going to work or is this not going to work? So I do agree with you that I am looking at it like from a more kind of, you know, 
as you said, the feminine perspective that's like you can't compare a car to a woman. However, to be fair, the actual car thing and whether or not it would work, I did get from a man and he would choose a car that has way more miles and that is proven to be reliable versus a car that has been sitting in the garage with zero miles because you can buy a car, especially from from that um, from the comment this is, uh, where this is silly, it says right? a hundred k, but it's on, like you wouldn't on. know Wait, if you're, it would you already work. messed it all up, Alex. You already messed it all up because you try to kind of sneak in. Um, you kind of try to sneak in a new premise, which is he would take the car that has a proven track record of at X amount of miles still being reliable, right? Okay, let's take that little sneaky part out of there, and we're just comparing two random cars to a man. And you tell the man, okay, you like both these cars. This one has 200,000 miles. This one has no miles, All right? His mechanical brain is going to say what? It's going to say, okay, well, if this one has 200,000 miles on it, then I want the one that has less mileage because it's going to probably work for longer, right? You can give him no other information than just that. Okay. And that's likely what he's going to say, right? Okay, so I do feel like perhaps, but then again, you're very generalizing because just like cars, relationships are very different and very person specific because some people love brand new cars, but some people prefer vintage cars. So it's like, it's, I don't yeah, know. Like, okay. I, 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 I understand what you're saying, cars. but you I don't see how it's comparable. Do you think vintage cars with less miles or more miles? More miles, because again, it no, proves they still reliability. Want it would be, the, so the vintage car with less miles is going to be worth way more money and it's going to be way more reliable. What are you talking about? Because, okay, so if the, if the, if the vintage car has zero miles on it, uh -huh. It has not proven it's going to be worth that a, it a would work, dollars? and like, and the what? and the actual parts like to replace it would be way more expensive than a car that has actually been proven that it is working. Like all the parts are are going Why together. Why would the parts be more expensive to replace on a on a low mileage vintage oh, vehicle? Okay, um, I uh, did kind of misspoke a little bit. Um, it's okay. more it's 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 more about like because it has not actually been driven out it has not actually been tried there is a chance that it would break especially since it has not been you know like running for a few years you know yeah, like it's be just chance. been sitting in the garage yeah there'd be less okay but if it was a two or three hundred thousand mile vehicle and it was sitting in the garage for the same amount of time it, it would have a worse chance I agree. I of agree. starting than the, the vehicle that had fifty thousand miles on it like if, what, what do you mean this makes this makes no sense so so I actually agree, which is why I said like if it has like a thousand miles, that would be a great indicator. And again, we're just talking about cars at this point. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's specifically the zero miles vintage car that's been sitting in the garage. You versus mean the thing that a, every man who loved vintage cars would want more than anything else? <laughs> it would the depend. One, the car with it, it zero would miles on, on an original engine. Hang on, on the original engine, the original body, the original everything has zero miles. That's the car they're going to take out knives and each other over rather than let yes. somebody buy it out from under them. And not then they the would put it back in the garage in the and not do anything with it because it's a vintage car. However, the people who actually want to drive the no, car... No, they're going to drive that shit. What do you would, mean? They're no, gonna be, because, you know gonna because do? They're gonna, it could you know break. Why, you know why they want the vintage because car? Because they, they have no the, idea how it's going to no, work. It they has want no the zero-mile vintage car because they want to be the first person to press on that fucking gas pedal. Yeah, and then it's going to break 20 miles Oh, look, baby, I was the first one in this vintage car to make it go vroom. Yeah, <laughs> right? and then it's going Can to I break 20 miles in. So yeah. it's like you don't know what a vintage car is Why the is fuck would it do? break 20 miles in? Because a lot breaks? of vintage cars <laughs> do that. A Why lot of vintage cars do break very fast once they were sitting in the garage yeah, for 20, 30 years. they break years. vintage cars with higher miles on them, though. So I, I don't even understand so what your if, argument is if here. If they were sitting in the garage for a while, yes, all the cars would break. I'm just going to say that. I'm, I agree with you on there. If the car was sitting in the garage. However, if the car was, was actually been driven throughout, you know, those, you know, 20, 30, like 200,000 miles, and it does not have any, you know, like track record, like, and was actually checked properly this entire time, 
um, you know, throughout all the years, then it has the reliability, uh, you know, like points to it because it has not broken and it means it was put together very well and in a craftsmanship like way. However, there are some cars that were made in the past that just didn't, you know, have that point. Are you smoking methamphetamine right now? <laughs> no. Like that, that. Okay. This may listen. This makes zero sense. I'm gonna okay. If you say I'm so, I'm going to reiterate back to you what you just said. Classic car has the same engine, same body, same everything as the There's other classic car. There's no such thing as the same on, when it's put on, together turn, by different turn, people. My turn, Alex. Calm down. Calm down. Has the same everything as the other car, except it has zero miles. You're saying your argument here is, well, the one with 300,000 miles has been proven to have driven. Yeah, so what? The likelihood of the one with zero miles being able to get a lot more life out of that car, it, it's, it's like a thousand percent better, right? It's like a thousand percent better. Okay, everybody and wants, everybody wants the classic car with zero miles because they want to be the first person to put the very first mile on the car. Are they you a car see, guy? You know why they want to do that? Hang on, my turn. Wait a second. You know why they want to do that? They want to do it just for the hell of it. They want to be like, I did it. I was the first. I put the first mile on this mother. Nobody else put a mile on this car except this guy. They love that shit. Just Gerald donated $200. Jesus. We'd rather be inside a car that's never been driven over a I'm car not that's driven by 30 that. people. Ergo, we'd rather be inside a woman who no one's been inside of than a woman who's had 30 men inside. Okay, um, Andrew, yeah, totally. are you I'm a car guy? I'm never taking you to an auto auction. I'm never taking you to an <laughs> auto auction. You'd be like, I want to pay a million dollars for that car over there that has 300,000 miles on it because after all, it's proven that it drives down the road. Like, what the, fu what the fuck kind of logic is this? Do you go to a lot of um, vintage car shows? Okay, hold on. I think we're like stippling away from like the concept. I, 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 I completely agree, redundant. which yeah. is why okay. I, it's my I don't rant think and that I'll take it's... it where I want to take it. <laughs> okay, okay, anyway, which is ahead. why I disagree that a car analogy and a woman analogy is mm. it does not actually fit because there's different. Do you know um, what an analogy is? Well, if she has yeah. zero miles on her and. Then y'all will just complain that she's a pillow princess because she doesn't know what she's doing. Oh boy! You do oh, yeah. though, Alex. Agree that a man, like men in general, they do want women who have less baggage. I I completely agree count. with that. I kept thinking of Q yeah. and like you're the first one to put those miles on yeah. those girls. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And so I I'm thinking agree with like, that okay, concept. what ended up happening though for that lady who you said she thanked you. I think we can all agree yeah. there are men out there who are going to accept that. Like, you know what? Absolutely. Yeah, she has some miles, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, the miles are on there doesn't mean it's a good car. Do you, yeah, no, it doesn't mean it's a good mm -hmm. car. However, um, again, like, do you go to a lot of the vintage car shows? No. Do you, Andrew, go to a lot of the, the vintage car shows? Not a lot, but I've been okay, to a couple. Okay, see, I have been to a lot hang of on, vintage car what shows. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, again. Back what I said. Which is why I think it's a I bad analogy. I don't go analogy. to a lot, but I've been to them. Yeah, yes, I've been to them. Okay, yeah. fine. And I've been to a lot of vintage car shows. So it's like, Nobody I don't know. Nobody at the vintage up. car shows you're going to is not competing over the lowest mile vintage cars. That's okay, insane. Okay, we're talking about zero miles. And again, yeah, I've zero, said a zero. perfect mileage oh, is about a thousand miles. Runner. So I have an original I don't road runner with zero miles. Oh, I don't want that one, Paul. Said no fucking vintage car ever. Nobody's ever said that. Yeah, because it's going Imagine. to continue sitting in the garage. It's not going to be driven. Okay. Yeah, they'll drive it. They'll drive it just to put the first mile on it. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's exactly. Every just vintage, the first that's mile. That's every vintage buyer's dream. It's like buying a vintage gun but that's like, never been okay. fired once. The first thing you're going to do is take that fucker out of the box and go shoot it. That's how it works. So, so what you're mm -hmm. saying is a vintage car, just like a virgin woman, let's say, you would just want to kind of have her just like the car, sit in the garage and not really, you know, go no, for a drive and be reliable. Because you'd want to fuck her. That's what I'm saying. I think you'd want her because you'd want to take her for a spin. I think you'd want her because you'd want to have sex with her and in. not put her in the garage. That's what I think. But what do I know? Okay. You know, what do I know? <laughs> As That's long as crazy. someone buys a car, I think it, everyone can have different opinions. But I think, I think like, 
You're talking. I feel like are you talking about a physical car? Because I think we're talking about relationships and like yes, I experience, know. which I agree on the relationship and the experience part. But it's like again, I don't agree with the car part. I don't. I think I think, I think it was, was never about the car. That's it. It yeah, was never. I about think the car. car I know it's not about the car, but I don't think it should be about the car at all. Yeah, yeah I like, think I, I, I agree. Not. Yeah, no, I, think, I totally yeah. agree with well, you the want relationship and the women part mm-hmm. of it, and that women, you know, and that man would want somebody with less, you know, miles on it, whatever. Andrew. But it just the car thing just does not make sense to me. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, we're all gonna get a car one day or another. What's the next question? Yes, they want them to go vroom. They want them to go vroom. They want the car to uh. go vroom. They want the chip to go vroom. They want the gun to go vroom. I'm sure they you want, do. That's what they want. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be the one mm. to tell you this, but that's what they they all want. Yeah, and any car. Okay, would go all right, vroom, so. all right. You've had. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, uh, Crazy Ace, thank you for the gift of 10 subs. We have two chats we got to read. I'll have you read them for us. Uh, they're going to come up here in just a sec. Ace, thank you for the gifted 10 subs. Appreciate it. Oh, Andrew, you're lagging a little bit. Mm, can I go? Yeah, go ahead. Um, men are less confident and will settle for less. I'm not 10, but I know now how much higher quality I could have gotten if if confident. Women having high confidence impacts men's confidence. Hmm. Living, thank you very much, man. Oh, here, just hide that on center. Uh, I think he, did he end the call or is he... Do I read okay. it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh. Wait, just hold on. Just let it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. They will all be for the right man. You said you had 5,000 women in your DMs. The difference is I say yes. You turn them down. The women are the same. I give them what they want. Oh, hold on. Devon Jackson yeah. donated $200. I would argue the only thing more sexual experience on a woman does is make her know what she wants the man to do for her in the bedroom. It doesn't make her more considerate of what a man needs. Hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. I think it's a good point, but I also think that more relationships, in a way, put sex aside. More relationships can help a woman know what she needs from a man and what she, and what a man might need. My experience is definitely, I agree with you, my experience has definitely helped me be a better person for a man in the long run. I know it works with men in general and what doesn't obviously every man is specific and has specific needs but as women men people we all have basic needs when it comes to like the connection connection but where there's this video game term called diminishing returns so for example in world of warcraft you know if you have like a (laughs) snare if there's a snare or like a root you can't just constantly have somebody frozen in like an ice nova like eventually they're gonna you know or you can't just keep stunning them like you can't stun lock somebody permanently like there's gonna be diminishing returns on stuns snares roots all this stuff right freeze freeze and, and so you gotta compensate for cooldowns aocs the whole nine all that stuff area of effect yeah. aoe all that stuff right so there's diminishing returns in video games so at what point with a woman do you start getting diminishing returns when it comes to her supposed the more relationship or sexual experience she's had uh at what point does it stop i i don't even know if there's perhaps there's some benefits but um i don't know i think uh like as a guy, you could take a girl who's never been in a relationship or who's a virgin. You can you can have great sex with her if you know how to lead. You can have a great relationship with her if you know how to lead. Even if she's not had any experience. You can just you say, "Well, I can I'll know what to do better." Or as the guy, I could just say, "This is what I need you to do." And if you're submissive and you're willing to follow my lead, We'll have a good relationship. Like a mold aspect, like being able to mold and tailor that person to you. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what happened yeah. with me and my baby That's what daddy. I do. Mm-hmm. No, um, no, I, but it I didn't agree. Work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. That's what I, do. I think that there's definitely two sides to it of having a lot of relationship experience because sometimes you can say you've had ten relationships and they've all, all been over a year long and you learned them and whatnot, and then you go into a new one, and then you try to put all these other relationship experiences onto them of, mm-hmm. oh, well, this guy didn't like this, so I shouldn't mm-hmm. do this, so this, da 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 and you're not listening to him or mm-hmm. taking yeah. them into account. So I think molding, in a way, needs to happen where 
to both people in every relationship for it to be successful. Hmm. I agree. Hmm. Uh, Q, do you want to respond to, I don't know if you want me to pull it back up? You or? can pull it up. You can all pull right. it up. Um, uh, Q, they will all be whores for the right man. You said you had 5,000 women in your DMs. The difference is I say yes, you turn them down. The women are the same. Give them what they want. Um, nah, I got standards. I ain't going to fuck every woman just because she in my DM. Hmm. And I and I don't just be believing guys who say they fuck X amount of women on the internet either. Hmm. Well, Paladins, thank you. We have two super chats here. Uh, can I have you uh, read oh. th these two? Thank you, the Gold Eagle 99, thank you. Well, Q, what conflicts are we talking about exactly? You do realize your contribute to the problem is doing that within the mating market in America. I'm not mad at you, you're a Heterosexual, heterosexual, heterosexual guy. Heterosexual, <laughs> Sorry, that's how dare like you? That. Just heterosexual. Own it. He has, he has. That's, that's going to be on his new Twitter bio. <laughs> Hater, <laughs> heterosexual. Wait, I'm going to change the title of the mm -hmm. of the video to include heterosexual. Uh, let's see, Q. Do you want to respond to that? Um, I don't see the world through your perspective. If taking two girls' virginity contribute to the world's problems, dating market problems you might need to be more concerned with what else is going on. I don't know how you came to that conclusion. All right, and then can I have you read this one? Maybe this will make more sense to you. <laughs> Platinum mm -hmm. credit card, virgin woman with high body counts, 250 credit cared? Card, I card. guess trying to say what? card. And woman control access to sex, you are an admi- wait, what is it, Dim diminishing your value with each guy you've had sex with? outside a marriage slash long-term relationship so, so hang on so let me let me um let me phrase this out the way he means it mm -hmm. please if you had a credit card that had a twenty thousand dollar limit on it would you prefer that it had zero dollars on it or ten thousand dollars on it ten thousand you would prefer it had ten thousand on limit. it. limit yeah a ten thousand no no limit. no it has a twenty thousand dollar limit or, or, or right. a twenty thousand dollar limit. Yeah, if it had a twenty thousand dollar limit, yeah. would you I don't prefer want a that it had zero dollars put on the card or ten thousand dollars already put on the card? Well, of course, zero dollars put on the yeah, card. Yeah, zero dollars, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. But again, that's a whole different comparison. I like that. Like, I don't know why we have to compare women to inanimate objects. Oh, it's an analogy. Maybe, well, we're not. Okay, I know. So, I understand so this it's is, an again, analogy, this is a very but it's feminine, like it just. This is a very it, it feminine way to look to at me. things, right? You're only looking at things through the prism of uh, of you, right? You're only looking through things through the prism of the woman. So, the, like, the whole purpose of this podcast is to show it from both angles, right? Here's how women tend to think about these things. Here's how men tend to think about these yeah, things. Yeah, so you are sharing your opinion and I'm sharing mine, and then the viewers can make their own opinions based on the women's perspective and the men's perspective. Isn't that right? Yeah, they can, yeah. absolutely. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, is um, I, try to, I try to put myself in the shoes, right? The opposite person's shoes to see it from their perspective. Do you? Right, so like, yeah, I do it all the time. That why do you think that I logically beat the hell out of you all the time? It's because <laughs> it's because I put myself in your worldview. So you bring up through, Santa Claus hang on, hang because on, you want to put on, okay hang on, before you start spurging out. Um, <laughs> it's because I put myself in your worldview and then I logically think it to the end and go, wow, that's really stupid. That's why I'm able to do that. So, th uh, so yes, I do. I do think of it from your worldview and I think of it from my worldview. Hmm. So okay, if you say so. Yeah. Because I have agreed with a lot of the male perspectives quite a lot, and I have mentioned that. However, I have not seen you agreeing with the women's perspective once. So I'm just pointing that out. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, what, what perspectives? Um, any woman's perspective. I've never seen you on agreeing with any thing? women at all. You always I agree, argue. I agree with, with them on all sorts of things. What okay, like what? Because I've, well, for, for I've instance, just not seen um, it. Well, for, let me give you, a, I can give you multiple examples. Please. So one example is there's many women who come on here who are religious, especially some, some of the Tradcath women. Uh, they have great takes, I think, when it comes to the dating market. I've talked to women on here who are mothers who I think had really good takes about how to rear children. There have been many women on here who have discussed the dangers of OnlyFans and uh, sex work, prostitution, things like this that I've been in mass agreement with looking at it from their perspective and my perspective. In fact, I would say that I agree 
with um, somewhere around 60, 70% of the takes that women have. The things that go viral are the takes that I disagree with. So I don't necessarily watch the viral stuff. I actually watch the podcasts and kind of go to where you're, you know, specifically agreeing or disagreeing. And I personally just not necessarily seeing you agree with a lot of the women's perspective. However, everything that you've just mentioned, those okay, are also your right personal tonight. opinions here's as well. Here's an example well. right now tonight. Uh, this gal, Maddie, I think it's Maddie, that's uh, you in the red shirt. Yes, yeah, I'm Maddie. sorry. I have my I have my notes here. Please forgive me. No I'm, uh, I, I try to write everybody's names down to make sure, right? So uh, Maddie said, Andrew's using a loaded term. I have it right here in my notes. He's using virtue as a loaded term. Mm -hmm. Very first thing I said, I agreed with her and said, I agree with you that the term is loaded. Very yeah, first thing I said yeah, to okay. her. Is that correct? Leave it. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, okay, so you've agreed that virtue is a loaded <laughs> term, but then you still continue to use it. So, okay, I'm going to give you that. Well, that no, you need no, to no, I disagree no, no, with that. No, that's everything. not what happened. Not what happened. What happened okay. was I said, I agree with you, it's a loaded term, but I think perhaps you and I are using it the same. But if not, let me give you a descriptor for yes, what I mean. I remember, I remember, I was yeah. here. Um, but it's like, Am again, I way off base here, Maddie? <laughs> yeah, no, he, yeah. he is correct. Yeah, no, he, I, we, do, I do agree, and I've agreed with the both of you, too. Okay. Yeah, he agreed. Oh, really? Because a second ago, it was, I haven't seen you agree with a single thing a woman has said on this panel all night. And now suddenly it's, well, I agree Okay, with well, you, you don't he's, need he's to really, mock he's, me. He really is quite nice and, and agrees with everything they say. It's like, maybe we can get a good, clear answer out of you. And uh, maybe maybe you're just coping, right? Maybe you're just coping a little bit. So the first thing Andrew agreed on was that we were using vir that th yes. that the, the term virtue is a loaded term. Yes. And then yep. we both went into clarification mode yes. and yep. said what we were what we meant yes. between like faking virtue mm -hmm. and then yep. and what, yeah, what I was not. a part of that. Yeah, I know I'm yeah. aware. Yeah. And so he agreed on multiple counts. Like, okay, and, and then he said that he agrees with. Like um, you said, trad, trad wives, trad Catholic women, mm -hmm. and then that you said yeah. that he shares those are opinions that he shares. Yeah, yeah. if he shares yeah. his opinions with those women, then of course he's going to agree. Yeah. So, and that's kind of my point. You okay? I, I just don't get take back valid. that you completely disagree with every single woman. I will take that back. My apologies. However. Um, you don't actually take any other person's perspectives and how they live their lives outside of your own personal opinions. And that's kind of is my overall point. So, you know. No, well, okay, just, just me agreeing that there could be a term which is being used that is loaded, right? Is me literally instantly giving an olive branch and saying, I understand your perspective here. Let's clarify it so that you understand what I'm saying and I understand what you're saying. And that was excellent. That was very. That's an idea. The, the, so this is the idea of common. Nice hang on, of hang on, hang on a second. This is the idea of us finding common ground, so I can see the viewpoint. But me just, just having to agree or like it, it kissing your ass on everything you say is insane, right? You never. If you do have, anyway. if you say something stupid. I'm going to tell you it's stupid. But if you say something which I think is uh, is is very sharp, sharp witted, or something I agree with, I'll be the first one to say she's absolutely right, and here's why. You're what you're doing right now is what I like to call pure, unadulterated cope. It's pure cope. I gave you an example in real time. It was backed up by another woman on the panel, right? And you you just lost the exchange, right? Just lost the exchange. Just take the L. Okay, I'm sorry, like, where did I disagree with the woman on the panel just now? You, you literally got done saying uh, you never, never agree with anything yeah. any of these women say. And, and then I, I gave you an example, back. even up tonight, even up tonight in real time. <laughs> and I took that and back way, and apologized. And by the way, we haven't even had that many so... discussions. By the way, I haven't even had an opportunity tonight to agree or disagree with very many women on the panel 